Yeah, good evening once more. Um, yeah, welcome back. This is a revision class um, on business analysis. You know, we didn't have uh, this kind of revision in project management because uh, you guys did a, a good job um, in project management. Uh, even in this uh, business analysis, with your outputs, you guys have really impressed me. Um, like all the diagrams, you know, starting from uh, even the process map, the the assist, the gap analysis, the to be uh, the process map. You guys really try. It, it means that you guys really. Um, beginning to understand how to use uh, um, these technologies like um, uh, Lucid Chat and the rest of them. And that is very good because as a business analyst, analyst you are going to be using such tools, you know, very often. So, and uh, even in the use case diagram, you know, I was impressed as well. Most of the people that did the assignment, I suppose they did well in, uh, in their use case diagram. But the, the only thing I noticed within the diagram is that some people, more especially the people that use uh, draw.io, uh, some of them don't know how to export their, their work in PNG, uh, which uh, should be presented to the executive or the stakeholders. You don't just screen um, shot your, your, your work environment and uh, send it to the, to the management. It does a, a wrong documentation and the wrong presentation. You need to export your work, you need to look clean, you know? Don't just say because uh, you are still uh, on training, you have to do the way you have to, uh, to, to, to present it to the executive, that's the way you should present it to me. Just be given the best standard so that if you don't get it, I will know that you don't get it. You don't know it. And I'll know how to tackle it, how to help you. Like now, I'm happy that I ask you people to uh, pick um, an application of your choice and uh, write a, a user story. That made me to understand because if I've given you a, a user story, ask you to copy it, it will be very easy. Everybody will be copying the same. But now, because of your, you are using your initiative, you know, it exposed a lot of you, the level of knowledge you've got. And that's very good. So this uh, revision is just to explain user story and the acceptance criteria again. It's very simple, and I want you to understand it, but it can be tricky, you know? So if, if you take, the, the problem a lot of people are having is that they are taking it for granted because it looks simple. But, it's not that simple if you are take, if you decide to take it for granted. Let's look at the description of user story once more. User story is a requirement for any functionality or feature which is written down in one or two line and uh, a maximum of up to five lines. So it, it, it has to be simple. It's a maximum of five lines. It, it, it needs to be very, very brief, simple, and uh, direct. So that's how user story need to be. That's why it cannot exceed five lines. A good user story should not exceed five lines. So looking at this particular example, I use the uh, WhatsApp because all of us use WhatsApp. Almost everybody these days is now a common uh, application. 
globally. If you are not using it, then I can think I maybe even if you have others like uh, Telegraph and you WhatsApp is number one. So let's look at the user story. As a WhatsApp user, I want a camera icon in the chat between box to capture and send pictures so that I can click and share my pictures with my friends. So because you are a, a user already and you log into a, um, a WhatsApp, so you want, there is a camera in that uh, um, type box where you're typing, there is a small camera icon there where you can click and then upload pictures. So for instance, you are trying to build an application or you are a customer or a user telling a developer or a business, this is what you want. You're telling them you want, it. for instance, they are telling, the WhatsApp doesn't have a, a, a functionality where you can upload picture. So this is what you are telling um, the, the business what, uh, what you want. Because this user story is uh, being captured from users, from the user's point of view. You that is using the product, you are telling the person that owns the product or the business what you want to see in his business. For instance, now you are, you are, you are telling Facebook um, what you want. You are telling Facebook that you want a camera icon. You want, you, want, you want a situation whereby you can be able to add camera um, pictures in your message while using WhatsApp. That's just the simple user story here. So, but the, um, Mistake some of you are making while writing user story is that you describe the benefit you get outside the application. All the things you, all the things you'll be, um, even the benefits, even the um, experience you want must be within the application or the software you are using. Like uh, some we are saying, um, uh, I want to um, be able to uh, shop in an e-commerce site so that I can um, buy clothes and uh, and look good. Looking good is good, but is no longer within the um that application is the thing that that application will help you to do that is the thing you are writing about not anything outside the application that is the simple correction that's where so many of you uh, made mistake and i want to 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 address that if you can just get it right like that that is good the other, the first uh, uh, example I use uh, during the previous um, lectures, I use a mobile, uh, a banking app where you can, as a user, log into your uh, mobile app and uh, view your account statement and uh, be able to um, make transaction like. Um, send the money to someone. You can see that all those activities are still within the, the application. Let's um, look at uh, this uh, user story here. Let's look at the um, acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria is 
is a set of um, accepted condition or business rule which the functionality or feature should satisfy and meet in order to be accepted by the product owner or the stakeholder. So this is the, 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 the condition. It must meet this condition. Like uh, in the WhatsApp uh, example, let's say given that I'm chatting with a friend and I have, and I, I should be able to capture a picture when I click on the picture icon on my WhatsApp app, I should be able to share image with my friend. So if you, um, you are chatting and then the, the developer have added that uh, functionality and the icon is there, the picture icon is there in your WhatsApp, and you click on that picture, you should be able to upload pictures from your phone. And then when you upload those, those, picture, <coughs> those pictures, you should be able to send it to your friends, share the, the pictures with your friend. That is acceptance criteria. But in a situation whereby you click on the, on the uh, picture icon, and you upload the picture and you want to share the picture and the picture refuses to go. Then the user story uh, in this case doesn't meet the acceptance criteria. So the user story has failed the acceptance criteria in that regard. It must be able to, uh, to send that picture. If you upload the picture and you can't, you can't send it, then it didn't meet up with the acceptance criteria. That's how it works. That's the acceptance. It must reach this standard before it can be accepted. So once it didn't reach that acceptance criteria, you as a business analyst, because you are going to carry the test after the developers have configured, um, developed that feature, you, the business analyst, you are the person that um, you wrote this um, user theory and acceptance criteria. So if it uh, didn't meet, you are going, not going to accept it. You have to send that um, work back to the developers. That's a, call it a bug. It means that you have identified a bug in that piece of work. So they have that work need to go back to the developers to um, fix that bug. And as soon as they fix that bug, they will still come back for another testing, which is called regression testing. If on the second test and uh, it passed, then it means that it has a meter with the acceptance criteria. And that is it. When that is done, it means that um, we call it definition of done. The job is done and it's finished. You can't continue with that job again. As long as, long as it has made that uh, definition of done, that is acceptance criteria. So these are the rules in user story and acceptance criteria. The user story defines the requirement for any functionality or feature. And acceptance criteria defines the definition of done for the user story or the requirement. That's how it's done. So that's how uh, you, 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 you plan your user story. And that's what user story means. Let's look at the user story and acceptance criteria map. So this is how the map looks like. 
although nobody's going to tell you to do this map, but it's just an illustration for you for clarity. From if you if you remember when we are doing uh, Jira, you see the epic. Epic is the where we put our product backlogs. Epic is a, a big, a big, uh, a big feature, which can be broken down into different uh, user stories. Uh, let's look at. Um, uh, e-commerce websites. In the e-commerce website, you can see that Epic is the um, product catalog. In product catalog, there are so many other functionalities attached to it. So Epic can be uh, regarded as maybe a, 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 a big uh, category which can be broken down into smaller molecules. So that is, from Epic, you can create more user, two or three or four users, so depending on how big the Epic is. So, and from uh, user stories, then you, can, you start breaking down, you can get uh, acceptance criteria. From one user story, you can get up to one or two acceptance criteria. And from one epic, you can get up to two or three user stories. And that is how it works. So, um, I need to take you people now to some of the, um, I just picked two examples from um, the work you people have done. And, uh, Although, like in this one, I'm not uh, decided not to mention anybody's name. Although this work, like this one, um, the the owner tribe, though it, it, it still requires some finishing touches, but that's the only person that tried very well came very close to a good, uh, the, a good um, um, user story. Uh, the user story says, as an indeed user, indeed, we know indeed, indeed is, um, um, indeed is just like uh, a recruiter, recruitment uh, website, just like Upwork. As an indeed user, I want to check my message inbox to see if the jobs I applied for a few days ago, whether I'm invited for an interview. To send benefit, to send some follow-up message, messages, via email showing that my interest in joining the team or move on the job or move on in my job search. Look, why I said that this user story um, is still need the refining, uh, refining because uh, it's too wordy. All this word, all this long grammar is not necessary. Uh, but the main thing I want to capture, I want everybody to capture here is that all these activities are still within the application. As a user, within the uh, Indeed application, now he's centering on um, inbox. So Indeed have an inbox. So it means that they need to, to configure, if he indeed doesn't have an inbox before, he as a user is telling indeed that they should create an inbox so that a user can check 
um, their messages. If they apply for a job, a, a recruiter should be able to uh, respond to their job through the in, indeed uh, email balls. And uh, he or her, the indeed uh, job uh, uh, hunter, can equally go back to check uh, for the response from the recruiter within the indeed post. So what indeed the uh, indeed the uh, application. So everything he or she as the user is doing is still within the indeed application. And is within the uh inbox inbox message. So this is the uh the the the, the message I'm trying to convey here that is within that application within that um, functionality in uh, indeed so let's look at the acceptance criteria i have a functional indeed account i have a valid login a password I have an email account linked to, uh, to Indeed. When I log, I log into my Indeed account, then I will be presented with all the jobs in the I've applied for. The job save for later interview and archive. Uh, archive jobs, etc. To find jobs, company review, um, check message inbox, notify uh, <laughs> inbox notification, then option to check my profile, my job, my review, email setting, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All these long grammars are not necessary. As we say that it needs to be very simple and they're straightforward. But the good thing here is that given the fact that you have an Indeed account and log into Indeed account, you should be able to see um, see your uh, inbox, view the job uh, acti activities in your inbox. So that is it. So you should be able to make your, um, your user stories and acceptance criteria very simple. This one is very lengthy. All these long grammars are not, um, and necessary because everything boils down in the activities in your inbox. So, and if you can't perform the activities in your inbox, any of the activities here in your inbox, then it means the, the functionality, which is the inbox, because inbox here should be the user story, creating an inbox in the in, uh, in Indeed website. If any of the activities here is not, uh, you can't uh, perform it within the inbox, then it means that uh, it be Indeed inbox uh, doesn't meet the user story. But all these things should be reviewed to make it simple. But the truth is that everything centers within the indeed. Okay, look at uh, this particular user story here. The um, the owner tried because it's very simple, but there's a bit of uh, digression here. As an account holder, I want to log in so that I can place 
uh, my food order to satisfy my hunger and avoid inconvenience. This one is um, the benefit. Good, you want to satisfy your food hunger, but you are not satisfying your food hunger inside that application. I don't see how you can satisfy your food hunger within the application. Because satisfying your food hunger is when you are eating the food. So that is where the uh, mistake come in. And see the correction here. As an account holder, I want to search uh, the food menu. Once you log in, because here is the food app, that's what the person is talking about. Once you log into the food app as an account holder, you can search for food, uh, the food men menu, and be able uh, so that I can place order for food of my choice. So these are the things you are trying to achieve. So the functionalities you are asking them to create is the ability to search for food and their place order, not to, to eat food. Because you cannot eat food within the application. So that is it. So that's how simple it can be and very confusing it can be. So if you if you if you, if you get this message that you are talking about the application, the immediate benefit you are getting from the application, it will make the uh, the understanding very easy for you. That anything you are doing is within the application. If you are, if it's a bank app, you are logging in there, you check your account, and you can from there send them, um, uh, make transfer or view your overdraft, and then know if you view the overdraft, you know when you are. You are going uh, above your overdraft or above your limit. You can sell those things within the app. Even your overdraft is still within the app. Everything you are doing is still within the app. Making the transfer is still within the app. Not like you want to buy cloth so that um, you can look good. Looking good is on your body, not within the application. So you should be you should be able to search for um, a cloth of your choice if you if it's um, e-commerce website there yeah, a boutique e-commerce website you should be able to search for cloth of your choice and place an order and make payment uh, within the uh, um, e-commerce website. And even track your order within. So these are the, 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 the benefits you, are, you can get from that application. You can use it, you can from there make payments using all these payment gateway like PayPal. From there, after payments, you can track your order, know when they are, they are, they are delivering because you, from the, the application or from the website, you can track when or, or where your order is or when is it arriving. So these are the benefits you are getting from the application. So let me take questions to know if uh, it's uh, sinking. Any question? Hello, I have a question. Okay. I want to uh, ask, since you said the, the user story must not be more than a uh, five line, the acceptance criteria, how many, uh, 
Does it have to have uh, maybe two or how many lines so that we won't make mistakes? When I mean line, I, I mean like um, sentences. The, okay. the, 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 the general, um, the knowledge I'm trying to pass is that it should be simple. Let's just say that it has to be simple. Try as much as you can to make your user story to be very simple and their set criteria to be very simple. You know, that is the, the thing that is not that you have to, there is no word count here. There is no um, word, there is no specific word count, but we are just trying to make sure that it's as simple, direct, and as brief as it can, so that everybody will understand it. Like now, for instance, see this um, user story as account holder. As account holder, when you start defining account holder here, it can be a full page. You understand what I mean? But now we have used as an account holder, it's very simple. And uh, here, I want to log in so that I can order food. Some people, when they, they want to define this process, it can, be, it can be a full page. So what they are trying to say here is that try as much as you can to make it simple for, for your team to understand and uh, easy to you know, comprehend and uh, consume. Because at the end of the day, you are not the person that are going to be working on the user story. It's going to be the developers. When they are going to be working on the user story, they might be alone developing the, the application. They'll just call your attention when they need you. So you try as much as you can to make it easier for them to, to understand, you know? So these are the things. And at times, you might just write this user story and do your job in a project. At times, your job might just end there. So some companies will just develop user story for them to keep, depending on when they are ready to start the project. So you try as much as you can to make your user story to be very, very brief, very simple. Not that uh, is going to lack the, the message. It must carry the full message, but it's like just, as I said, account holder. When you say as an account holder of a mobile, of a bank app, it means that you own the account. You registered, you submitted everything, your passport, you are, they screened you, they did everything. You know a lot of things you need to do before you become an account holder. So, but you are not going to start describing to us all the processes you, are, you undergo in order to become an account holder and what it takes. Once you just say as an account holder, we know um, whom you are within the app. Have I cleared you? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good evening, sir. Please, can I ask a question, sir? You are free. Okay, sir. Um, I, I, I want to confirm again. You just made mention of it, and I want to know. The, it is business analyst that creates the user story. Then the acceptance criteria um, is also... Um, created by the product owner or the stakeholders. So is it that the, the business analyst um, creates the user story, then refer it back to the uh, product owners to uh, do the acceptance criteria, or he does the same, he does the uh, user story and does the acceptance criteria, then the stakeholders or the product owner looks at it. Okay. The user story, 
is being created by the business analyst. And the acceptance criteria is being is a follow-up of the user story that you've created. You know, is an is is a leg up of the uh, the the user story. And your, let's say the user story that this is how um, I want, this is what I want. And this thing I want, in order to be like this, it has to be like this. So you cannot just create a user story and another person will come and create acceptance criteria for you. So when you create a user story, you create acceptance criteria. And then, because you are working under someone, um, who created, uh, who brought the initiative, who sponsored the, the project, you need to validate what you've done. You need to show your work. You know, that is the, the relationship. You know, that is the relationship between the, the 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 business analyst and the stakeholder it depends on the stakeholders because there are so many stakeholders here in the business. Everybody that have got a stake in that project is a stakeholder. So you must not report everything you do to all the stakeholders. It depends on the stakeholder you are talking about. If it's the 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 product owner, yes, because the product owner brought out, is in charge of that product. A business analyst can be a product owner. Yes, it can be a product owner. If you are the one that bringing the initiative or bringing the, the product you guys are developing. But whenever you create something, you need to refer back to the product owner to make sure that he's within the vision, within the objective. So he needs he need to validate it that, yes, this is what I want. Because you are just telling the developers, you are just trying to tell the developers what the, the product owner wants. Let, let's put it in a, uh, this way. The product owner told you something. He, he, he said that I want this thing. And then is your duty to go and tell developers what the, pro, uh, the product uh, owner said. That is the user story. You know, so you are trying to create it in a language the developers will understand. Maybe because the product owner don't speak the, the, the language of the developers. So he's now telling you. So you are now trying to translate, translate it back to the developer what the product owner wants. And at the end of the day, after creating, you need to show the product owner, look, this is what I created. Is this what you want? You, so, you go through it and say, yes, this is what I want. And then it becomes the job of developers to start consuming it. So that is um, how this is the relationship between all of them. But the product owner, uh, I mean, the, the stakeholders can be, even the, the customers, the users, end users, they're all stakeholders. But you are not going to start, uh, when you create a user story, you, you go and start telling the, and uh, the, the uh, end users or the customers, you might not even um, know some of them, you know. So, you, but you have to validate your work. In your work, you must, uh, that's why you have to do racing metrics. I don't know if you have been, for you to ask this question means that you, you are, there are some things you didn't understand very well. Like you do a racing metrics, when you are uh, describing racing metrics, 
we describe everybody's role, who is uh, reporting to who, who is accountable to this. So you must have defined your relationship with everybody. Let me go to, let me see. Go to our resume click. See if I'm... This is our asymmetry. So before you get to, to before you get to that stage, you must have done all these things. Know whom you are reporting to, and what deliverable. Like you can see activities and deliverables here. If you have listed a user story, it's going to be part of your activities and deliverables, which you must have listed and you've done during the. Uh, yeah, project breakdown structure. You must know whom we are reporting to using this resting metric. You must know who is like here, you see responsive, who is responsible, who is accountable, who must be consulted, who must be informed. So when you finish your user story, you come to resting metric, you know who is responsible, whom are you going to report to with this resting metric? Then you report to the person whom you need to consult while, whether uh, from the person, you then use this uh, metrics to know whom you are reporting to and whom you just need to uh, inform or whom you just need to consult. So these are, uh, like you can see here, Adam is uh, accountable, he's the sponsor. So whatever you, you do here, you need to, um, a report to him because he's, he's, um, he's the sponsor of the project. You need to know. So that is it. But if you Did don't you understand know? this um, race metric very well, you, you say, um, you let me know. What is this one? Is that to be? Okay, okay the chicken and you that to so that is how you report. I, down. No, I read it. I thought the day she was watching, I thought that the chicken egg was free. But of course, I didn't know that she was not. So that's how I'm asking whether you. Hello, if you are not, the, please, um, if you are not the person that. Um, Hello. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know that I was unmuted. I raised my hand. Can I go ahead with my question now? Yes. Okay, I'm so sorry for the interference from my point. Uh, I think you are partly answering my question. Uh, I want to assume that the user is also a stakeholder in any context. User. Am I right? Yes. The user. Yeah, the end user is a stakeholder. Just that yeah, one. The, the end user can be, you can call the end user a customer, or if he's in the company, like if he's the person that really dealing directly with that product in the company, is an end user. If he's uh, the person consuming it, maybe making use of it as a customer, he's still an end user and a customer. Look. Uh, why I'm asking is because of the user story, because uh, the name alone, user story, implies that it's a, sto it's a story. If you want to do a literary trans uh, definition of that phrase, it means a story from the user. So yeah. I was just wondering for a business analyst, you know, how do I generate a user story? Do I have to layers with the users to generate a user story? And how do I do that? So that was what uh, my mind was working before you started talking about the okay. The way you generate user story is that it's like we are just starting afresh, but let's it's very important that everybody do understand it very well. The way you generate user story is that. When there is a problem or when there is an issue, or when the company is trying to develop a, a product, they want the users 
um, opinion of the users. Just like um, when I sent um, a survey to get your opinion about um, the wrong mouth, you understand it now? I ask you people to use raw mouth. And when we are using raw mouth, after using raw mouth, I was asking you people, what do you want to see? In these circumstances, you are the user. So how did I, how, how am I generating this um, um, uh, feature maps? I mean, um, uh, epic list, which is the functionalities. There's a lot of functionalities that I mentioned that uh, I wanted to know what you people want. And some of you are um, uh, saying that you want um, um, a page. Some saying that they want a marketplace. Some saying they want um, a group. So these are what the users are saying about raw maps. You are the user at this point in time. So when I generate all these things as a, a, a business analyst or as a product owner, I would then say, okay, I will uh, hire a, a, a business analyst and take the business analyst. This is what the user wants. The user said that in this raw mouth uh, application or website, they want a page and they want uh, a marketplace in this uh, raw mouth. And this is what I'm telling the, um, the, the business anal analyst. When the business analyst is conducting requirement gathering from me, a stakeholder, which is the product owner. And then when the business analyst gather this requirement for me, then the business analyst will go and do research about how a marketplace looks like in uh, social media, you know? And then from there, he will get the idea of what the users are looking for. And from there, he will start them from marketplace which is an epic. You start now looking at marketplace. What are the small, small functionalities that will come under this marketplace? Ability to list product, ability to view product, ability to uh, purchase product. These are small, small functionalities. All these small, small functionalities are user stories. That is how a business analyst develop user stories. You understand it now? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Thank so you that very is much. How, I do. That is how you, you, you do it. That's why I say that by the time you'll be doing it practical, because from then now, when we are going to do it practical, you'll be asked to develop a marketplace now. You are not going to come to, to ask me who is sending you to develop marketplace as a product owner. How are you going to do it? I'm telling you to do it for me, and you are now coming to tell me how you go. You are going to do research. So a business analyst is a researcher. So you are going to research on how to uh, build a marketplace in um, social media. Maybe you go to Facebook and, and they ask them how they do their how they did their own. So, but the issue I'm trying, the message I'm trying to, to pass is that you're going to read a lot of articles. You're going to read a, a lot of find trying to find out how they do it. And then from there you develop a user story, which you hand over to the developers. Developers, when the developers see uh, your user stories, they know what you want. They don't need to want to have a good user story. They know what you want. They will even uh, help you to um, um, 
rewrite some of them. If you, are, if you are making some mistakes, they will tell you that this is the best way to create this because they have um, experience in similar. That's, that is what we call the user story refinement or grooming. You know, product uh, backlog. That is the time you start grooming your product backlog or you refine your product backlog. You might write it and this developer might tell you that this thing you are saying is not obtainable. That this is the way we can do it. That is the uh, the way it's obtainable in the market. Yeah, in that aspect, they know more than you, so you should um, uh, try to concur. So you have to re uh, refine your user story with the developers, and then the the product owner might be there, or he might he might not be there. So now you are representing the interest of the, state, the, the product owner. So the product owner's own is to make sure that the users are getting what they want. If I need to break it down, you let me know. Are you okay? Are you? Yes, sir. Mm. Okay. Uh, Good evening, sir. If you uh, is now blessed, Okoli. Yes, it's me. You're blessed, Okoli. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. So, sir, what I want to ask, I don't know if it's, it's, it's still an ask because you have expanded, you've explained it. Deeply, but I just want to know if what I understand is correct. Okay. This still has to do with user story. Okay. Now. On user story, taking a website as an example now, there are different icons and features of some of the buttons, the icons on the website. Mm. Now, does every feature on every icon on the website have a user story? Yeah. Or is user story based on the entire, the, the entire function of the website? Like I can create a user story or maybe YouTube website where the, there is an envelope. I can say, that a user can would, uh, be able to click on it and see their messages. And then still come over to the video part of the website and say that a user should click on the icon and be able to play videos. Or is user story just on the entire function of the website? And that's what I want to be clear about. User story is the behavior. Everything, the way every functionality in that, uh... Every functionality in that uh, application or website is a user story because it, uh, it does something. It's not there for fancy. Only if it's not a website that uh, the user, but most websites is being used by people. So what are the benefits of using that functionality? Let's look at... Uh, Uh, let's look at Facebook. Hope you can see my Facebook account. Yeah. Can you see me? Yes, sir. We can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. We can. Okay. See. This is um. Uh. Yes, an epic yes. list. This friend here. This you can see me clicking friends. This is epic list. This page is an epic list. This group. Is an epic list. This event is an epic list. This marketplace is an epic list. Let's click this marketplace to see all the user stories in this marketplace. You can see. So from this marketplace, you can see marketplace. On that marketplace, you can see browse all. Ability to browse 
all the product. It's a user story. It's just like categories and subcategories. You know, epic list is a is the main category, and user stories are the subcategories. You no, know? live video shopping, live shopping. You see, is a user story. I've not used live shopping before. Notification is a user story. Buying is a user story. Let's see, buying. There's yeah, nothing here. Okay, under buying, look at um, all the things you can get other buying. Purchase order. User story can still be broken down into smaller smaller molecules. So if a user story becomes big, you break it down. Like this one, you can see this is still a purchase order, a lot, uh, follow. All, this, all these icons you are seeing, you can see is for here to, for a purpose. So they all, user stories. So let's look at this live shopping. So as you can see, what this one means that um, maybe when you click here, you can start um, bargaining with the owner of the product in real life. So I've not used it before. <clears throat> You see all these uh, functionalities that this like icon is a user story. This comment here is a user story. This share here is a user story. These are user stories. You know, these are ability to like, just like when you are shopping product, for instance here now, See, so it's a, it's a user story. Like now, if I click a product, I should be able to view the product. You know, and see the product requirements, where the product is being, uh, the condition, the details, everything. But these are is a, a, a user story. This particular activity is a user story. So these are all the user stories in marketplace, which is a big um, functionality, which is a big, um, is an epic. So from here, you can break it down. So when I was explaining, I told you that you can, uh, from the product, uh, from the user story map, you see from epic list, you can get so many user stories. So that's how it works. So. so friends here, on that friend, which is epic list, you can see friend request, suggestion, all friends, birthday. From here, I can know my friend's birthday. So these are user stories under friends. So you can see almost all the icon here is for, uh, is doing something. It's not for fancy. They are all users. Either they are user story or the epic list. They are epic, which can be broken down. So I can say that most uh, icon are user stories. So, but I can't say that every picture is a user story. That I like my picture here is not a user story. But ability to add my picture or to, um, if I click here, create a story is a user story. So I will stop sharing. So is that, um, have I cleared you? Yes, sir.
I'm so saying. I think it's more it's more doing it practical so you, you see it how it's so all those things are user stories. So Chine Chine, I think I've uh, you said something, you are still raising your hands. Oh I'm sorry, let me lower my hand. Okay. So any other question? So I think from now we should be able to create a quality user story. I mean not. I mean not. You can say something. You are raising your hand. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. I really appreciate everything you've been teaching us, sir. My question is: uh, You said the user story can be broken down into uh, smaller molecules. Yes. Is there a particular name uh, the smaller molecules are called see with regards story. to the analysis, sir? It's still user story. It's still user story. Okay. Even the epic, even the epic is a user story, but is that it becomes big. So we call it epic, becomes the major functionality, it becomes a functionality of this. Whole. So everything is about what the user wants. Both the epic is still what the user wants. So they're all user stories. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So user story is a story about all of us using application, what do we want, what makes us happy. We are just trying to get the mindset of the users about. So, so that start producing what the users want, not after producing their product, you say that I don't like it. How can you say you don't like it? Why you are the person say that this is what we want? So that, that's why so many times we, we, we give a, We'll be giving reviews which we don't understand. All these all these comments you make on Facebook. At times you see one million comments, you see 550k comments. From all these comments, they just got the do research from what we want. And the next thing they, they will produce something. He said, ah, but you are the person that asked them to do that during your comments. So so with this, the next thing, the next assignment is going to be your real life project. So you start uh, writing um, a real life project, a real life um, user story to develop um, our our raw map. So that is it. So. That will be the next thing we are going to do, and uh, that's what I'll be working on to we'll start uh, onboarding you guys, so that we we'll, we we'll start the next phase. Uh, this is going to be the last um, class because I'll be seeing people asking questions. Do we have class today? Do we have class today? It means that some people don't even follow up. Because the last time we, I told you about this is the last um, the the when we finished the last uh, lecture, I said it that it's going to be our last lecture. This one is coming because of the our performance in the user story, and I think it makes sense because okay, Prudence, say something. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. Please, sir, I want to, my question is um, about concerning this video, the, because the last time I missed the class on user story, probably that was why I had a lot of issues with it. But then searching it on, on YouTube, I could not find the class. So I want to know if this one can will equally be uploaded. So that in case anytime we have some kind of uh, being able, we are like forgetting or anything, we can go to the YouTube and have access to it. Yeah, you know why I made the um, I made it open on YouTube so that people can uh, uh, follow up. 
even the people that didn't register. I want everybody to have the knowledge. You know, that's why I'm despite that it will be through the website that you can access our content. But I left it open. Even if even in the web, uh, YouTube that it is, I can close it up as a yes. private content so that people can only view it through hours. But I created it, I made it open. And every time I upload, uh, every time we finish a lecture, I will not close my laptop until I upload it to the YouTube. So if you are not getting it, maybe it's because of um, network error is from your side, not uh, from my own side, because I will upload it and, and I'll tell the video, make sure that the video is playing before I close my work. Okay, sir. Thank you. So one, the next thing I want to ask is that look, I was browsing through some jobs on business analysis on Facebook, on, on Upwork, and I saw a job that stated that the applicants must have a basic knowledge of software development. I want to know if that is really necessary or should you go and start learning software development? What are you learning now? We're doing business analysis. What, so is, what, user, what is users to? Okay, that is a- uh, You're already learning software development. Okay, sir. User stories, you're already creating a requirement on how to write. This is, you are, you are, you are already, let me say, a business analyst is a software engineer. I don't know if you understand that. Okay, I'm getting it now. A technical business analyst, you are a software engineer because you are you are drawing the just like an engineer will draw the design of a building. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. I want okay. to use this thing to paint the picture for you. When you come in a construction house. A building, uh, a, a, a real estate construction house. Mm -hmm. The engineer will draw the plan, the architecture, everything. They will draw everything. We call them a building uh, engineer mm -hmm. because they are the people that are uh, writing it, and then they will be there in the site making sure that the mason, the carpenter, everybody is following, do it this way. This is how I want it. This is what I want. This is what in the picture. That is how you, a business analyst. Yes, okay. You start writing the application. This is how one, this application, this user story we are talking about is just the required, just the way the, the civil engineers, the way they are writing their own. That is where you are writing your own. And at the end of the day, the developers are the mason, the carpenters. Do you understand it now? Yes, sir. So when they are telling you that you need a, a software, uh, you have it, you have it already. What they are going to ask you is about this user story. That's why I'm being more particular about user story. They will ask you how do you how to create a user story, how to write acceptance criteria, how to write test cases, how to do wire framing, how to create a um, use case diagram, process mapping. Okay. There's no other thing they are going to ask you as a software engineer. And you must know the stages, like a software development life cycle. A software development life cycle is from initiate stage, define stage, execute stage, and closure stage. That's a life cycle. All the activities you perform from the initiate stage to Closure stage is the software development life cycle. Mm. This is the life cycle. Okay, sir. I we dealt on it um, during um, even in uh, project management and even in this business analysis. You know, okay. we we dealt about uh, software development uh, life cycle, which. We use um, uh, Scrum, Agile as a Agile methodology to, to, uh, to explain. Agile methodology, the life cycle using the Scrum, we, we treated it. So yes. it's good that if you, even within, the, within our group, 
you can be asking some of these questions so that when we treat it, others can learn from it. Anything, because it's good that you start browsing for job, looking at the job requirements. You need to understand those job requirements. The one you that like get you confused, it might be something you know, but maybe because of the, uh, the technical jargon might not, uh, so if you miss such a situation, ask a question. Uh, just uh, send the question. Um, uh, send a question me, uh, to the group. Uh -huh, so that I will, I will put a light on it. Okay. But uh, the, the truth is that you are already a software engineer. By all these things you are learning. But you can say maybe you are a, a business analyst is a software engineer. So okay, sir. That means all these diagrams, the 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 on the flow chart and everything is part of representation of the software that yes, created. that is the design. Okay. You are no, designing it. Okay. So that is called what you call the we we, we did some was, I said something about software des, uh, design. Uh, requirement design. Yes. Doing that requirement design, we design all these things. All these things, once they approve, uh, you, you finish your business case and uh, the management approve your business case. And the next thing is uh, design. You start designing the, the software, the solution, whichever solution, you start designing it. So, mm. Thank you so much, sir. So you can see it's very easy. You see, when you hear software engineer, you start panicking. But it's something simple. You must not be um, a developer. A developer is a developer. Engineer is engineer. You are engineer. Do an engineer do more of designing. So, any more Thank questions? Thank you, sir. Sir, there is a document you promised to drop on the WhatsApp. Um, I think it's a case document or something like that. But yet to see. Yeah, I will share it because uh, if I had a shared document, some of you will not be uh, serious. I think document will do magic, but document will not actually do magic. But I will share everything so that we we'll aid you. You go through it and see, and everything will be shared. Now we we'll finish our training. Okay, sir. Yeah. So I will call it um, a night, and uh, I will see you guys at the other end. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, sir.